Welcome back to another Tabletop Review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Glock 19 Gen 3 9mm semi-automatic pistol. The Glock 19 is probably one of Glock's most successful designs, whether you're talking military, law enforcement, sporting, or those looking for a reliable personal defense firearm, the Glock 19 has been a popular choice and for good reasons. In the world of so many options for well-made handguns, there's probably none more popular than the Glock 19. Known worldwide for its outstanding reliability and a reputation of being able to withstand extreme brutal conditions, Glocks are known to be the ultimate workhorse firearm. Yet the Glock 19 is also an accurate, comfortable, easy to maintain firearm available at a reasonable price and probably more supported out there in terms of aftermarket options than any other handgun in the world. Okay, if you're familiar with my videos, you may know that I don't own a Glock. It's not that I don't appreciate Glocks, nor that I don't hold Glocks in high regard. In fact, just the opposite. I think Glocks, in general, have a domination in the market because they are just that good. My son, who's a military professional, is a real believer in the Glock brand. He also owns two. But so far, every time I've been looking to buy a Glock, I've always found something that appeals to me more. And since I basically stick to reviewing guns I own, the only Glock review I've ever done was on my son's Model 26 about a year and a half ago. But since he and his wife are visiting us, he has suggested I review a few of his guns and, of course, he has suggested his Glock 19. So here it is. Let's make sure this gun is cleared first. By the way, if you enjoy this review, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. So what we're looking at here is the G19 or Glock 19 Gen 3. There are actually two newer generations of this pistol, the Gen 4 and the Gen 5. But before we get into the Glock 19, let's step back and talk a little bit about the company and how we arrived at the development of the G19. First, Glock is an Austrian manufacturing company that began life in the 1960s making curtain rods. However, in 1970, the Austrian military commission Glock's owner, Gaston Glock, an engineer to design knives, grenade casings, and machine gun belt links. This was the beginning of Glock's entry into the firearms business. The first Glock handgun was designed at the request of the military in 1981. Since Gaston Glock was already an expert in polymer manufacturing, he applied this technology to the development of the G17. There had been other manufacturers of polymer guns, but Glock is often given credit for having brought the polymer frame pistol to the world's attention. But Glasgow also designed his firearm to include his now famous safe action system, which incorporated a tri-tiered safety using the trigger, firing pin, and drop safety, which eliminated the need for an external safety. The G19 was designed in 1988 using fewer parts to reduce malfunctions with a heavy emphasis on reliability. Glock had a brilliant marketing plan that included aggressive discounts to law enforcement. As such, Glock handguns became very popular, especially for police and military forces. As field use was expanded, multiple problems with the initial design became apparent. Glock responded with new tooling and upgrades, and the design resulted in the G19 Gen 3, which was successfully introduced in 1998. Since then, two additional generations of the Glock 19 have been made available, the Gen 4 in 2010 and the Gen 5 in 2017, securing the Glock 19 as one of the most reliable handguns in the market today, with a well-earned reputation for being capable of withstanding the most brutal of conditions. Now, as you may know, the Gen 3, Gen 4, and Gen 5 variations of the Glock 19 are all still available. So we should probably take a moment and talk about the differences between the Glock 19, 3, Gen 3, 4, and 5. Some believe the differences are subtle, and others consider these uh, differences significant. First, the Gen 3. It was a significant upgrade from the Gen 2 and is still offered as an option today. So we begin with the Gen 3, like this one. In brief, the Gen 3 has finger grooves characterized by a specialized grip area with finger grooves that make the weapon easier to hold. The G3 also has a thumb rest on either side of the pistol, and it typically includes a universal grill as well as a, an extended extractor, which easily indicates whether the chamber is loaded. 
So how is the Gen 4 different? In addition to the Gen 4 appearing a bit more modern, Gen 4 features an increased texture on the grips, sometimes without the finger grooves depending on the model. Also, there's the interchangeable back straps for customizing the grips for better fit. And you can also find more G4s with ambidextrous features. But probably of greater note is that Gen 4s are known for being smoother shooters compared to the Gen 3. Now in 2015, the FBI was shopping for a new sidearm for its agents and provided a list of requirements to which Glock successfully responded with the G19 Gen 5. The Glock 19 Gen 5 was made available to the public in 2017. The Gen 5 is different in its feature of updated internal mechanisms, including a bolstered trigger system, extractor, and firing pin safety, provide even more consistent accuracy. The Gen 5 eliminated the finger grooves entirely, but provided an updated grip texture and an ambidextrous slide stop. There's also a flared magwell on the Gen 5. Finally, the G19 Gen 5 can be had with Glock's marksmanship barrel for improved performance and accuracy at a distance. So depending on what's more important to your needs, there are three generations of Glock 19s to choose from. Some people, like my son, prefer the original format of the Gen 3. Now, as you may know from my other reviews, if I know a movie connection for one of these firearms, I try to point that out. A better question for the Glock 19 might be, or hasn't it been as the primary weapon for the good guys and the bad guys in so many movies and TV series? So much so that I'm going to bother to point out a movie in, in this review. Glocks are just everywhere. However, I will point out that it was the second Bruce Willis Die Hard action film in 1990 in which Glocks got their first major Hollywood attention. My son was kind enough to bring his gun's packaging. So we have the plastic case with the manual and other paperwork. We have the lock. We have an extra magazine. We have a auto loader. And we have a cleaning tool there. Now my son was able to pick up a Galco holster that's nicely formed for his gun for about $60. Nice thing is, is you can get uh, accessories uh, fairly easily and not badly priced. So that was a nice little addition. Specifications include that it's a 9mm, 15 round magazine standard plus one. Trigger pull is about 5.5 pounds. Dimensions overall 7.28 and uh, length. Height is 4.99. Width is 1.18, and the overall weight is about 23.65 ounces unloaded. As for function, my son hasn't made any modifications to this gun, so what we have here is a classic basic Glock 19 Gen 3. One of the first things you'll notice is that the unloaded gun feels light for compact. The finger grooves are at the right locations and there's adequate stippling for good gripping. The balance is good. Magazine releases at a uh, convenient location. The 15 round Glock magazine loads easily enough and reinserts nicely in the well. Charging the uh, slide is actually very smooth. The sights are large and the white outline shows up clearly against uh, range targets. The trigger is a little narrow for my liking but take up is about a quarter inch with a short follow through to break. Trigger pull is light at five and a half pounds. Reset is relatively short, nicely defined. Not bad. Recoil was lighter than expected with a reasonable muzzle lift. No problems with stationary five and a half inch targets at 25 feet my standard pistol training distance, but I had a little trouble staying on target during rapid fire and with alternating targets.
I just don't know what it is about me and Glocks, but I'm just not very good with them. My son has the same problem with Beretta, so he sort of understands what I'm talking about here. I can hit a stationary tar target okay with, at 25 feet with uh, steady shots, but I'm just not as good with the Glock 19 when I try rapid fire alternating targets or moving targets. It's a totally different story if I've got my HK P30 or my Walter PPQ Navy in my hands. Maybe it's a matter of practice, I don't know. As for cons, there's not much to criticize about the Glock 19 like so many other guns I've reviewed. You basically end up pointing out items of personal preference. I've heard complaints about the angular trigger guard, uncomfortable cutout in front of the magazine well, and of course that although Glocks may be at the top functionally, they aren't very attractive. But just about every issue that might have been a legitimate flaw for the Glock 19 has been addressed aggressively in new generations to the point that today's Glock 19 Gen 5, for example, is actually a pretty damn good gun. Now, that being said, I know what you're thinking. If you're a handgun guy and the Glock 19 is so great, why don't you own one? Well, like I said, every time I think I might buy one, something else seems just a better choice to me. That happened three times. The first time I chose the Walter PPQ M2 Navy, which even my son admits is really a spectacular firearm. The second time I chose my SIG P239, and then most recently the HK P30 won out over the G19. Now I'm not saying the Glock 19 isn't a great gun, I'm just saying that for me, given a choice, like in the case of the Glock versus the HK, the HK won out. But the reasons were definitely just personal preference. And one more thing, this is something my son pointed out, that many of those he meets who are strong Glock fans tend to have guns that have been substantially modified. Triggers, springs, barrels, sights, grips, etc. To the point that it could be fair to ask whether the, their Glocks are still really Glocks. Of course, the good news is that the G19 is probably the most modifiable handgun in the world and reasonably priced upgrades and accessories are everywhere you look. Even the fact that the 19 is still available in three generational formats says something. But as I've said, I don't usually buy a gun to make a gun, but that's just me. As for pros, so while my personal preferences seem to steer me away from the Glock 19, there's no doubting its popularity, there's a reason why the Glock 19 is the benchmark handgun today. The soft recoil of the Gen 4 and 5 make it a great choice for new shooters and those with less grip strength. As for choosing a Glock 19 as your concealed carry weapon, the general reliability, compact size, and stopping power makes the G19 a good choice. I've read countless reports of tens of thousands of rounds fired without a single failure. Similarly, I've read accounts and viewed demonstrations of accuracy that are amazing compared to most handguns. Given Glock's legendary reputation for reliability, its easy maintenance, it's on equal support for parts, upgrades, and accessory as well as pricing that makes owning a truly exceptional quality firearm even for those without deep pockets. It's easy to see why the G19 is probably the most popular handgun in the world today. Glocks are fairly easy to disassemble and reassemble. We're going to remove the magazine. We're going to check and make sure the gun is cleared. We're going to pull the trigger and then we have these two tabs on either side. We're going to bring the barrel or the slide back just about a quarter inch. Push down on those slide release tabs, and that allows us to remove the slide from the frame. And then we can remove the spring, recoil spring, and the barrel. And that's it. Reassembly is basically the opposite. We're going to return the barrel and the recoil spring and I return the slide to the frame that's basically it now as I've already said one of the really good things about the Glock 19 is its price you can pick up a brand new Glock 19 very very easily for around five hundred and seventy five dollars it's actually a pretty good buy now before we end this video, I'd like to remind you if you haven't already, be sure to like, share, and subscribe down below. And thanks for watching. Okay, we've taken a look at what has made the Glock 19 probably the most popular handgun in the world today. We've explored the differences between the current three generations of the Glock 19. And while Glock 19s are known worldwide for outstanding reliability, aftermarket support, 
comfortable shooting and excellent accuracy, the G19 is still widely available for a very reasonable price. So in conclusion, while there have been two generations of improvements to the Glock 19 after the Gen 3, there's no doubt, based on their individual merits, any of the Glock 19 models will be well worth taking a good look at. The Glock 19 offers such consistent performance and excellent value for what you get, it'll be hard to find a better choice. And who knows, there may be a great deal out there in the future that puts a Glock 19 in my sights that I won't be able to refuse. Till then, any weapon you carry is better than one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe.